Hi, this is Christine Bowden. You can find me at aaclp.com. I'm going to be doing a quick demonstration of how you can make your own game board um, using Google Slides for free. And these are the steps that we're going to take. So we'll go through them uh, one by one. So the first thing we want to do is uh, we want to find a template. So here's my um, uh, my actual slide here. And what I'm going to do is head over to Insert, and I'm going to go to Image. And then I want to upload from the computer. I mean, I want to search from the web. You can also upload from the computer. You can save an image in your computer. So if you see what I did here, um, I just said save from uh, search from the web, and this comes up. So you can pretty much search anything. So I'm going to search game board, clip art. If you put clip art next to something, um, you're going to find only um, animated images, which is very, very cool. But um, so in this situation, in this case, I found the game board that I want, which is this one. And then all you need to do is drag it. So I'm clicking it and I'm dragging it right into my into my Google slide. And then I'm just going to change it to make it a little bit bigger. So right now, if I look at um, my um, instructions here, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going here. I'm going to close this up. I'm going to use Chat Editor's capture feature to add images. So I'm going to add images into this slide. Okay. So I'm going to show you how I do that um, by going over here. It's my next one. As you can see, I added an image. Oh, <laughs> I added an image of vehicles. And um, I also added this, which is what do you do with it, okay? So I'm going to show you how um, you can do that. So right now, when I actually tap, uh, right now, um, when I would tap on my image, you, you could still move it. It's still like an image. You see what I mean? I'm going to show you after I'm done with my completed board, I'm going to save the whole thing as a background image, then you won't be able to move it anymore. But right now, I just wanted to show you that. So let me go back over here. So we're assuming that we can move the entire board right now. So I want to start adding things. So I'm going to add, let's say I want to say, I want to put over here um, appliances, okay? So what I need to do now, I need to go to chat editor, which is down here. Um, that's a download. All you have to do is down, go to uh, Google, download chat editor, and you can find Lampwords for Life, um, the entire communication system on Chat Editor, as well as uh, WordPower. And so my student um, is using WordPower, let's say. So I want to use symbol sticks. That's really the most important thing. I want to have symbol sticks. And so I'm looking for um, appliances. So my student's using WordPower 108. But by the way, you can also change that. You just go to library. English, and here's my symbol sticks. Here's word power. There's also multi-chat and those types of programs. But um, so let's say my student was using word power 60. As you can see, it's a little clearer in the chat editor. Um, but let me go back to, well, I, I can actually keep it here. So um, I want to add um, appliances to this particular um, part of my game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to, um, I'm going to exit this. Um, I want to go to my groups. And this is the actual picture that I want to add into my slide. So what you can do is, all you have to do is go to capture. And I'm going to press appliances. And it shows up up here. I just have to press copy to clipboard. Go to my slide. And I'm going to press Control and V at the same time. So here it is. That's exactly what was up here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Put it over here. And I want to add the word appliances so it's a little bit bigger. So I'll just add a new text box. Probably have to make it a little bit smaller. Oh. 
appliances. Okay. Let me move that over a little bit so it all fits on there. Okay. So that's pretty much all you have to do, you know? So you can just continue to do that. Um, when you're using chat editor um, and you're using the capture feature, everything will be captured up here, which is actually really nice because if you want to teach someone the pathway of how to get somewhere, you can make a bunch of pathways and just copy and paste them into, um, into whatever platform you're using. So, but what will happen is like if I press go back, that will also show up. So I might not want that. So you just press clear and you get what you want. So um, now let's move on. So this is pretty much what I've done. I also did the same thing with like question words. What do you do? That would be one of my questions. So, um, over here are all of the examples. This I just kind of continued it. And so I had actually clothing over here. So these are all of the different ones that I put. Sometimes I copied and pasted. Um, so let me just go back to the other one that I was showing you before. If I wanted to copy and paste appliances and put it somewhere else on the board, um, I just have to make sure it's over here. I have to click and drag, make sure both of these are um, highlighted, I press Control C and Control V. That's that's copy and paste, and then I can just move it maybe over here. So this way, I can have a couple of different um, uh, category names um, on my board. So um, let's go on to my completed board here. So now I want to show you um, how you can make the completed board into a permanent background. Okay. So right now, as you can see, um, things are still highlighted, which means they can move around. And I don't want them to move around anymore. So the way that you do that is you need to open up your snipping tool. This is a tool within your PC. If you search for it, if you search snipping tool, you'll find it. Um, you just open it up. You press new. And this will come up. And I'm just going to actually click and drag the entire slide. And now I'm going to press file and um, I need to save it. So save as. Um, now I'm going to save it into downloads because I have a lot in other areas. So I'm going to write down, um, let's see, I'll just put game board. Um, see, I already did this with images, second one, I'm going to say, okay? So I'm going to save that, close my snipping tool. Now let me go over to um, a blank one so you can see what I'm going to do. So I'll go over here, okay? Now this is blank. This is just a blank um, um, slide. So I'm going to go over to backgrounds right now. And I'm going to choose my image. Browse. I'm in my downloads, and this is the one that I just saved, right? So I'm going to head over there, press open, and done. Now, as you can see, if I try to click and drag anything around, I can't. I can't click on anything. This is like the permanent slide, which is fantastic. So now I have my game board. Um, now I want to, um, let's see, we can, I'm going to, uh, we're going to make some um, game pieces. We're going to add some game pieces. We're up to this stuff here. So the way I would do that is, um, and I have it down here. These are my game pieces, okay? So you can actually add these game pieces. So you can move it. If you share your screen with your student, which you can do through platforms like Zoom, your student can actually move their game pieces. So to find the game pieces, it's the same process as finding the actual board that we did earlier. You would just go to, um, we would go to insert image, and then we want to search the web. So you might say game, let's see, um, game board, I don't remember what I did. 
this. Well, here we go. This is the one that I found actually. So again, you just look down here, you'll see so many things. If you put clip art, you probably find more like this. And then you just tap on, you just uh, touch it with your, you click on it with your um, mouse and you drag it. And then it's there. Then you would just adjust the size of it, right? So I'm going to delete that one because I already have them here. So that would be um, the next step. So now I want to show you how you actually play this game that I just made. So again, I made a game where I really want to work on descriptive teaching. That's an extremely important goal for um, the students that we work with that use AAC. Um, and there's a lot of research and information about it. If you look up Gail Van Tatenhoff, she's done um, a lot about that. Um, Catherine Helen just, uh, she also just, um, she published a blog post in her blog about it. Um, Aaron Sheldon has spoken a lot about descriptive um, teaching. So descriptive teaching really is teaching a child how to kind of circumlocute. That's really what we're talking about. So we want to teach the child um, ways that they can figure out how they can describe something. Like this is such an important skill because first of all, the words they use to describe certain things uh, like objects are common core words. They're words that we use. And if they learn how to generalize those words, they're going to be able to communicate so many more things than just a bunch of nouns. Um, so that's the first thing. But the other thing is, what happens if they get stuck on wanting to say something? Like, let's say they want to say um, washing machine, for example, and they don't know how to say that word. They don't know where it is in their device. Um, do they have strategies in place? You know, they need to learn strategies. Like our students need to learn strategies for when they don't have a word available, <clears throat> excuse me, for what they want to say. So they need to be able to say, it's an appliance. It's, you know, it's big, it's hard. Um, it goes round and round. Put clothes in, right? So we need to teach them these types of strategies. They're not just going to know that. So. I'm going to show you um, how I kind of made this particular game work. So the next thing I did here to get the students to move their um, game piece around, we're going to use what's called Wheel of Names. Um, so I'm going to open that up. <clears throat> you just go to the to the website called Wheel of Names, and then you can easily um, adjust what you're making here. If you add to this, if I added like purple to this, which unfortunately purple is not one of the colors in Wheel of Names, so we're not going to be picking purple, but we can pick uh, red, which is kind of like orange, we're going to say, uh, in this case, and blue and green. <clears throat> but if I just added, it would just add another um, section, another piece of the pie to the, to the game board. So now let's say the student is playing, student goes first, all they need to do is tap on this wheel and look what happens. Okay, so as you can see, this is highly motivating. The student just got to like spin the wheel. How exciting is that? We see green. I also like the way it's just spelled out. We're not using symbolated. Um, text, we know that that's not evidence-based. We, if we want to work on literacy, we've just got to work on the, the word. So this is highly motivating. So green. So let's see. We have to put it on the first green button. This is kind of like Candyland, right? So it's by the first green button, and we have hygiene. So then what we want them to do is to go over. We're going to close this out. And this is what I'm going to show you. If they're having, if they're stuck right now, I want them to choose something from hygiene. So I can help them out by going back into chat editor, you see? So let's say they're using this particular um, page set, which is the 60 basic. I might say, hmm, hygiene, I wonder where that could be. That might be under word groups. And hmm, let me see. And let's see if they can get it. Ah. All right, so you can pick anything you want. Let's see, what is it going to be? So maybe they can pick something like this one. They can say toothbrush. Let's say they <clears throat> they just chose toothbrush. I heard on the other side of the screen that I heard toothbrush, or the parents said they just selected toothbrush. 
So then I can say, oh, I have a question for you. It's my turn to spin the wheel, right? So now I can head over here on this particular wheel that I have and I say, okay, here I go. Here's my question for you. Ooh, let's see. I want to know what does it look like? So we're talking about a feature of a toothbrush, right? So we could say something like it's long. So let's take a look at a toothbrush. Hmm. So we're gonna close that out. Maybe we could just bring chat editor right in. We could say, ah, what does it look like? Okay, let me see. The toothbrush is long. That's something that we might find under describing words. Hmm. Or let's see where long is over here. I usually use word power 108 because it's less lengths. And as we know, less lengths is cognitively easier um, than having to know that long is, first of all, the describing word and that it's not under the first length, right? So I'm not really sure where long is. Let's see. Long and short. I don't know. Let's just say we're saying that it's um, this toothbrush is, uh, why do we say wet actually? It can get wet, right? So I'm on my second page. So here's wet. So we could say, hmm, I think the toothbrush can get wet. That's a way to describe a toothbrush, right? So, um, so again, so that's how you can do that. You can play the game and you can take turns and it could be your turn. And the child asks you the question. And by having this, um, these pathways, it can maybe help them through getting through it. And so this back and forth, kind of turn taking, playing a game, it could be really motivating. Now I wanna show you how I added these actual symbols to the wheel of, um, of names. So right now, um, over here, as you can see, I have, over here I have question words, where is it? But over here, I just have question words, where and it, right? So I wanna change this to take out the it. So I'm gonna show you what, what I did. Okay, so the first thing I did in this case was I did question words where, and then I pasted it in here, and then I did it. So since I already did that, I'm just going to show you um, another way that we can we can do this. So I'm going to use my snipping tool again, and I'm going to just snip it from here. Whoops. Uh, let's see. Let me just delete that. Okay, we're going to say new first. We need to do newer. Okay, so we're going to say, where is it? So I'm just going to snip this here. I'm going to press file, save as, and we'll call it wheel where it's. Just wheel where it's. Okay. So now um, I'm going to take this out because I don't want that one anymore. And as you could see, when I took it out, it went away from there. Add image. It's already in my downloads. Where it? This is the one that I had open. Now, it's not that clear because um, it was very small over here. So I could have enlarged it before. I should have done that before taking the screenshot of it. Or I could have gone up to one of my other ones before I uh, pasted it into a background. But here it is. I just want to show you how you would do that. So now let's say um, the child is going to ask me, right? I got to something. I picked, you know, let's say I went to container. I picked box or something like that. And now the child gets to pick. So now having again this um, sequence here, they can the pathway they can see how they can get there if they're having a little bit of trouble. So they could say, what does it look like, right? And then I can describe and they can help me and I can give them choices. So I hope this was um, a helpful thing to learn. Um, I certainly love learning these kinds of things myself. So um, I hope this was helpful and um, have fun creating free boards free game boards with your students.